thank you for that. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, Mr. Minister, uh, Vineet, and uh, MK, and everybody who spoke. Uh, they, 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 the speakers before me spoke some wonderful things about India and the opportunity ahead. So I will try not to repeat some of them, but just to make a few points. What makes us really uh, very positive uh, about our country uh, going forward? Uh, just to uh, 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 put this in context, the theme is uh, uh, the, the third emerging uh, superpower. Now, uh, I've tried to focus on 2030, which is just seven years from today, so that it's just within grasp, and uh, try to see what the economy could look like and what is going to power us ahead. Now, uh, uh, by 2030, it's, India will be like a $7 trillion economy. It's like about $3.4 trillion economy today. Uh, and there are various estimates for India's GDP by 2047, which is somewhere between 30 to 40 trillion dollars, depending on various estimates. Let us say, hope the truth is probably somewhere in between. Now, GDP is not just a number. Uh, it has a serious implication on the standards of living of people, health, education, roads, infrastructure, all that. Now, uh, for context, since I'm one of the initial speakers, inaugural speakers, I'll try to you know, frame for you where India is coming from. In uh, 2000, uh, India's uh, per capita GDP, per capita GDP, was uh, $442. Uh, in, uh, it, India reached 1,000 dollars per capita in 2008. India reached uh, 2,000 per capita in 2020. And if you divide $7 trillion by the population of India, like uh, you know, 150 crore people, India's per capita income in uh, 2030 will be like about $4,700. Let us say within touching distance of $5,000. Now, for 45 years, uh, you know, after independence, nothing happened. India GDP stays flat and nothing moved. And it's a very big price to pay. And you can't say this because of India's, India's a democracy, India's a poor country, India just, you know, it's not true. That's not the only reason. Uh, all the Southeast Asian tigers, Taiwan, Hong Kong, um, Malaysia, Singapore, all these countries are equally poor like India in, uh, in, 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 uh, in uh, 1960. Per capita income of India and most of these countries were all about uh, maybe $100 or $130. By uh, 2000, one, uh, 1990, which is 30 years from 1960, all these countries had reached per capita income of $6,500 to $7,000, which India has not even reached today. 1990, $6,500. India was at $440. So you really know that India has truly underperformed. And thankfully, somewhere in 1990s, India started doing the reform. And then you see every 10 years per capita is now doubling. And now the numbers are out to you. Now, what is the implication of this? This is very important. Now, we say that GDP ha affects the li lifestyle of people. Let me tell you the implication of this. The tax collection of the country today tax collection, both center and state put together for our country is about 47 lakh crores. Now, this is all GST, netted of what paid to the state, etc. Absolute collection, state and center. India's GDP is 270, uh, 272 lakh crores, 47 lakh crores are tax collection. That translates to 17% of GDP. 17%. Now, if India stays at same 17%, now we wake up in 2030 with 650 lakh crores from 270 lakh crores going to 650 lakh crores. And then you take 17% of 650 lakh crores. India's tax collection in that year, whoever will be the finance minister, will be presenting a tax collection of 120, 115 to 120 lakh crores of tax collection. Just to recollect, 47 lakh crores today, 120 lakh crores of tax collection in 2030. Now, the country is collecting that amount of tax. By the time, the number of poor will be anywhere lesser. Tax collection will be that amount. And then ministers uh, like our Honorable Mr. Gadkari sitting here will be now investing not 10 lakh crores a year in capital expenditure, probably be investing 30 lakh crores capital. They are like crazy, like it's just an insane growth coming up. And that's the extraordinary power of compounding that is coming. I am really excited to hear the budget speech of, say, 2030 as to what that story looks like and where the money and investment is going. I mean, it's just a getting thrilling uh, for us. Now, I'm coming from the banking system, so I'll tell you the impact of the banking system point of view. Today's the credit outstanding in the country, total credit, banks, NBFC is all put together, a net of bank lending to NBFC, is about 150 lakh crores. 150 lakh crores credit outstanding. 
you compound this about 14 percent also till 2030, it is going to be uh, uh, close to about 400 lakh crores. Think, so 150 lakh crores going to 400 lakh crores, which means extra 250 lakh crores will be credit outstanding. That money, obviously, if a bank is lending, obviously someone is getting that money. That amount of money is going either to a corporate, which will invest, probably going to an individual who is going to buy a car or a two-wheeler or something, or going to an SME is going to invest in the... So that amount of money is going to hit the Indian system, and they are obviously going to buy something with that. And if you're buying that, then obviously, if you're buying a car, some steel, some rubber, something is getting uh, produced. So, uh, so that whole chain of economic uh, 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 econ economy is going to you know, dramatically change uh, the story going forward. Now, let me just say that uh, uh, what are the few things that, uh, uh, th 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 that um, are India is getting right at this point of time is what we did not get right earlier. Uh, number one, I told you banking system credit from 150 lakh crores to 400 lakh crores. That's a big growth that's going to happen in the next seven years. Number two is economic ideology. If you recollect the movies of uh, 1970s, uh, you'll find that uh, you know, the, the villains used to be business, business people. Okay, Pran, uh, Prem Chopra, uh, Amrish Puri. Just think of all those, you know, all of us of that generation very well recollect those names. We were, they were all bad people, all bad people, and the only heroes were the worker union people fighting them. Yes or no? Yeah. And when we see today, you don't find any movie being made like that. Uh, and um, uh, basically now entrepreneurship is now becoming an accepted, uh, you know, it's that the government is talking, we want to grow entrepreneurship, we want to grow the business, uh, and, and so on. Uh, number two, um, is in terms of uh, uh, the entrepreneurial government that we have, this is also very important. Entrepreneurial government, I'm not saying entrepreneurial government. I'm not saying a government is setting up PSUs and running you know, um, steel companies and airline companies, India even nationalized banks, India even nationalized insurance companies, India nationalized everything that could see at that point of time. I'm not saying entrepreneur, I'm saying entrepreneurial government. It's very important. For example, when GST was supposed to be launched, a lot of people said a lot of things. Oh my God, we are not ready, system is not ready, people are not ready, states are not ready. God knows. But at least our government went like, with, like a bullet at it and said, we just have to get it done. Announced a date, made it happen. And then things fell into place at that point of time. This is an example of a government that gets it done. When I mean entrepreneurial government, I mean a government that can get things done. That's what I really mean. And now Aadhaar. Again, people are talking of Aadhaar, saying that, you know, is this, et cetera, somehow government called it a money bill, put it in the parliament, got it done, Supreme Court later approved it, and life went on. But if you get stuck in red tape and this debate and that debate, nothing would have happened in the country. No Aadhaar, and by the way, all of us now know the power of Aadhaar, because now Aadhaar is not just for opening bank accounts, you are giving a large number of other services, giving subsidies to, to the poor. Look at the amount of benefit that came from Aadhaar, because a entrepreneurial government got it done. So the first thing I told you is that the ideology that business is good, entrepreneurs are growth has to grow. Number two, I told you entrepreneurial government that makes things or gets things done. Uh, number three, reason why we feel good for India, and I hope India can continue to do that. Suppose you're a, you're a finance minister and you suddenly have tax collection of, let me say in this example, 47 lakh crores, both center state put together. You can of course give this money to people, to the poor, and say I made so many people give farm waiver, you can do hundreds of things, and make millions of people happy, but then you'll build inflation, you know where the game goes. We've, 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 we've seen that movie many times before. But at least in our case, we're saying, okay, we're going to use this money to build roads, bridges. Gadkariji is sitting here with us. It is an astonishing story. I don't know how many people know. From the time of independence till 2014, India had built about 97,000 kilometers of highway, uh, highways. Gadkariji can confirm when he speaks here. In the last nine years itself, India has built 50,000 kilometers of highways. It's staggering to think about it. It's 
staggering to think about it. Because building a road is not like writing a bill and cutting tax or anything. It's not just a paper. You've got to really got to get the, you know, the, um, um, uh, the, the contractors. Somebody's got to build the material. Somebody build the road. You've got to acquire the land. You've got to deal with litigation. That's a real hard plumbing work. And India's done that. And, uh, you know, when people say democracy, I can't do it. In right in the same democracy in this country, Gadkariji has made it happen. So, we, really, Mr. Gadkari, we want to... Uh, and now, when we talk of infrastructure, uh, you know, I'm astonished when we hear some, him, him speak sometimes. Now he talks about waterways. Now it's not only green economy, now he talks about the blue economy also. Now multimodal transport, national logistic policy. I mean, a government that gets things done. You know, those days, once upon a time, people used to say, let the government get out of the way, and we will do. No, 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 government can't get out of the way. Government has to make things happen, not by doing running companies, but by enabling uh, entrepreneurship and enabling things like this to happen. By the way, when these kind of roads come up 50,000 kilometers, transport becomes easier, GST uh, makes sure that your logistic costs become lesser, there are no octroi posts. Cost of goods comes down, India becomes competitive, exports go up, manufacturing goes up, you know, all that story. So, I told you three factors, uh, you know, entrepreneur, entrepreneur, government, investment in highway, uh, in infrastructure. Fourth factor is digital. You know, I was in U.S. Uh, last week, and I was just watching some people uh, pay. Either pay, pull out credit card, debit card, and pay, uh, or people pay cash, you know, at the normal retailer, et cetera, et cetera. Now, I mean, I was looking at them, and I said, you call me third world country, boss, you're third world country, I'm first world country. Um, <laughs> I'm, and, 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 and this is a matter of huge pride that our country is at least on digital transaction uh, through NEFT, RTGS, uh, Bharat Bill Pay Services, credit card, debit card, UPI. I, I, I mean, sometimes people say, kya hua desh mein kya badla? You see the road, people at uh, Bhajiwalas and you know, all the people, roadside people are using UPI. Now on that UPI is just not a digital transaction activity. Now on that, because trail is established, because for a long time India kept saying inclusive economy, inclusive economy. I've heard this for 30 years of my life and I'm sure it's been happening before my days also. But for the first time, India's actually doing inclu inclusive economy. So let me say the fifth reason why India is going to become successful is because India is looking at a truly inclusive economy. It's not just a large large reforms like G GST and IBC, which are all big, important things, but also developing inclusive economy at the bottom of the pyramid. Uh, you know, all of us know that India has, uh, you know, given under the Ujula, Ujula program, given LPG connections, given electricity connections, given bank accounts. India had 400 million people without bank accounts until maybe one, 10 years ago. Can you imagine? It's like living in the 15th century or 14th century. That time also people didn't have bank accounts. Today also India didn't have bank accounts, right? So uh, only now in the last seven years it's got fixed. Uh, so now, now the new term of inclusive is not really opening bank accounts because that's an achievement already done. Now the new term of inclusive economy is inclusive credit, uh, inclusive insurance so that every people get insurance, inclusive mutual funds so that people are able to invest in, in you know, markets Etc. So this is the fifth factor. I mentioned four. The fifth factor is developing an inclusive um, uh, country, uh, and uh, this is something that has to. India is doing it. India has to stay at the cutting of it. And no amount of inclusion has happened, despite all the talk and effort and priority sector and all that. Nothing happened except the last few years after digitization happened and a continuous effort to make it happen. I am telling you, there is no call from this government ever to say that lend to this company or lend to that company. There's never, neither our bank nor any bank in the country is getting it. Uh, that's wonderful, really. Uh, uh, it really makes for a f super clean, uh, you know, um, uh, decision-making processes which are purely on merit. But there is direction, uh, there is intervention to say that we should be in this uh, a part of the economy. You know, the other day I heard the finance minister speak that India has lent 23 lakh crores to the, under the mudra program. Could you have imagined? In earlier days, if you had given 23 lakh crores, I can tell you 20% of them will be NPA only. Now, hardly an NPA. We are lending and 23 lakh crores under three programs. Okay, there was a Shishu program, uh, which was less than 50,000 rupee lending. Then there was that... Uh, 
Tarun program, which was 50,000 to 5 lakh rupee lending, and then there was, uh, you know, there's, there's one more after that. And uh, th that was above 5 lakh to 10 lakh. In these three categories, um, the, India's lending is about 23 lakh crores and performing fantastically well. I'm telling you right now in this forum, you can see a public investor presentation for our bank. We have lent close to 30 million customers in the last maybe 10 years or 12 years of our existence. And delinquency is hardly there. Poor people repayment is fantastic. Fantastic to say the least. <laughs> NPA in this segment, credit loss in this segment is just about 1 to 1.5%. Collection is running like 99.5%. And, and therefore, the, the, this amount of inclusion that has happened is one of the more powerful reasons, because not entrepreneurship at the top, which we should do is a great thing to do, but entrepreneurship even at the bottom, you know, entrepreneurship at the top, through PLI schemes, etc. But entrepreneurship at the bottom of the pyramid is also coming up beautifully in this country. And this is the, let me say, sixth reason. I mentioned five reasons. The sixth reason is inclusive economy. The seventh reason, and I, that is probably my last reason, there are many more we can go on, but in the interest of time, is green economy. I heard Minister once talk about one sentence he spoke, really stuck on my mind. Uh, he, he used the term um, uh, Jal, Jungle, Jal, Jungle, Jameen, Janwar. Okay, Minister said that to us right now. Thank you very much. <laughs> Just think about the power of that thing. Eh? Jal, Jungle, Jameen, Janwar. Okay, now developing a green economy about on, on the, because it's just not GDP and tall buildings and, you know, Manhattan kind of buildings. It's all about Jal, Jungle, Jameen, Janwar. So if you think about that, uh, let me say, let me call that the seventh big reason why India is uh, looking good for us. I really feel that this is one of the rare moments in our lives and lifetimes when, you know, we also have a strong government and also have a reformist government. As an normally milta nahi hai kisi ko matlab pata nahi how many countries get a government like that for 20 30 years at a stretch whatever because because sometimes you can have a very strong government but can have you ideologically taking your left and leaning and doing forward poverty in methods and redistributing poverty all over the place and we've seen that also sometimes you can have a strong government uh, you know uh, you can have a weak government wants to reform but cannot do. Uh, you know, the other day I was speaking to Shekhar Gupta, uh, talking of this uh, thing of, uh, um, you know, getting things done. Uh, he told one story about uh, um, uh, our former Prime Minister, very beloved person, Mr. Vajpayee Ji. He said that, uh, he said that uh, someone once talked to him, he was getting one very important reform done. And uh, at that time, it was a difficult reform, important but very difficult because a lot of populist things were going around. So uh, someone told him that Vajpayee ji, ye to nahi karna chahiye, parliament mein bahut halla ho jayega. Look at his response. He said, ab halla halla mein clear kar dijiye. <laughs> so something, uh, you know, Entrepreneur, entrepreneurial government gets things done. Our government is getting things done. We are very delighted. We can see the seven things I told you about entrepreneurial government is that green economy influence, all the things I told you. So I think that we are in a very, uh, um, uh, these are some very powerful reasons. There are many more. Uh, but we lost a lot of time. I told you that to be a $400 economy, $350, when others are running $7,000 is a big wasted opportunity for our country. Uh, but now uh, we should do it because we can see our people are still poor, a good portion of India is still poor. And if you want to come out, we need this. And I read Mr. Amitam's Kamp's book recently. By the way, it's a wonderful, absolutely beautiful book. If, uh, you know, if those who haven't read it, must go through it. Uh, lastly, for our bank, just to quick uh, 10 seconds, just to share with you that uh, we are uh, we, 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 we were uh, uh, we are very, very focused. We're built, trying to build a really world-class bank. I don't claim we are there yet. We were a new bank, but we have kept our aspiration to build a world-class bank. Uh, our, uh, you know, we made a profit over 2,400 crores last year, so we massively uh, uh, turned around and we are trying to build a truly 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 clean bank you know in terms of uh, habits practices culture uh, it's very important those are foundation stones and it is reflecting in all our products or services you know we're, so um, so I really look forward to goodwill and um, uh, that's about it so thanks very much ladies and gentlemen it really is a pleasure uh, talking to all of you and uh, really on behalf of all of us uh, let me just hope that uh, we keep this entrepreneurial streak of our country keeping going ahead thank you very much